Welcome back guys to our channel. Super excited to share a video that a lot of you have re uh, requested from us and it is first year study tips for medical students. And so on this whiteboard we wrote out some of the things that we thought were really important to share with you guys today. And so for our first tip we would like to share is plan out your schedule. Medical school is very difficult. A lot of the information is going to be very dense and a lot of people like to ask, how is medical school like? And I like to say, it's like drinking out of a fire hose. A lot of the classes you'll be taking are very dense heavy and it's just a lot of information that you have to absorb at such a little time. Planning out your schedule should be your first priority no matter what it is, so you kind of could get a sense of your time management and your balance as you make your way through your first year of medical school. And I want you guys to make sure that you study every day. If you have a class, if you have, say you had anatomy today, I want you to come home and look over that lecture that same day, even if it takes five minutes, and if it takes 15 minutes, an hour, just look over it. Number two, study methods. <laughs> I would suggest for study methods, there are plenty, right? There's Anki, there are handwritten flashcards, there are notes that you could take in a notebook like he likes to do. Yeah. And for me, I kind of, sometimes I'll type up notes, sometimes I literally just, I will scroll through, this is still active learning, trust me on this, but I will scroll through the lecture, I will take photos of the lecture to look back on the slides that I need help on, later on, that's something that um, I like to utilize. There's just so many styles that you could do and that also ties into number three, which is experiment style, ex to experiment the different styles. With that, I would say um, take the quiz bark questionnaire, which we'll link below. Uh, that's really important because that will give you an objective look into what would work the best for you. Uh, it'll help you in case you don't know before and honestly it doesn't matter how you studied before medical school is a completely different ballgame so you'll learn over the first month. Preview lectures. So when I was beginning my first year of medical school I was very anxious to take my classes and I wanted to perform to the best of my ability and so I thought to myself it would be best for me to at least look over the lectures before classes started and make some mental notes, write down some notes, make some questions and be prepared to go into the class as if I was reviewing the lecture instead of trying to keep pace of the lecture. Some of the, while you're sitting there in class and the teacher is teaching the material, you kind of get sidetracked and you kind of want to get in your phone, you kind of want to go on the computer, you kind of just feel really distracted and you just feel like you're not really paying attention and you could do something better with your time. And I find myself doing that all the time. However, if you just preview the lecture and you go into class feeling ready and you know the material and you're comfortable with it, it only makes you understand the material that much better and then at the end of class you could talk to the teacher and ask her the questions that you came up with the night before or two nights before when you previewed the lecture. So I think that's a very beneficial thing to do as a first year medical student and it will honestly upgrade your ability to stand out in, uh, amongst your classmates. And to elaborate about what previewing could mean, say there's some words in vocabulary that you have never heard of, make sure that you look that up beforehand. And any material that you want to scan over quickly is the smart thing to do. Number five, tutoring and office hours. So I would suggest that if there is anything that you've seen early on that you don't know, immediately go seek help from your professors or from your upperclassmen or any, even any fellow classmates that might know the material a little better or have caught on a little quicker than you have, make sure you do that. There's no shame in that and the earlier you do it, the better because if you go and seek help closer to an exam, I guarantee you that more of your classmates will also be joining in and you might not get the kind of attention that you would want. Going to off stars, again, we said this in a previous video, is super important for you because you kind of gauge how the teacher what the teacher really expects from you. And you should you should really take that as a big beneficial thing to do. Um, a lot of people don't really utilize tutoring hours as much as they should or office hours. And it only will honestly benefit you as you study and as you progress through medical school. Six, online resources. There have been times when I've been studying and the concepts are just too hard to grasp. Sometimes I feel like the teacher didn't explain it as well or they thought that they did explain it as well. But some of us, like me, thought, oh, I really didn't understand it. Ah, oh, the teacher's really busy, I couldn't ask him my questions. So I would go on, go on YouTube, because YouTube is an amazing resource that you guys should use, and just look at, look at a five, 10 quick minute video on that concept and just get it down like that. 
I used like Khan Academy and some other sources that we're gonna link down below in the description for you guys to look at and it's honestly incredible. Like you just watch these videos, these quick videos, you get the concept down and you move on. And you honestly get the benefit of all of that in one sitting. Yeah, and even if you do understand the material already or you understand what exactly the concept is but you don't have, say it's a pathway and you don't have that pathway down completely, this is good to cement the material and maybe you just didn't learn it well through a textbook or verbally, like me, I like visuals and maybe the book didn't provide that for me or the lecture didn't provide that for me. That's what you would get from the videos. Cadaver Lab. We pay a lot of money to go to medical school and if you have access to a Cadaver Lab, please utilize it. The Cadaver Labs are not just something you just have to do for a lab, let's say for three hours to dissect the body. Cadaver Labs should be a way, a learning tool, something where you can go to really understand your studying of anatomy. Me and some other of my classmates, we would go to the anatomy lab maybe once a week or twice a week with a tutor maybe, let's say, and just go over the dry bones and go open up some of the cadaver bodies and just really look at some, maybe some of the origins, some of the insertions for some of these structures because the human body is an intricate, is an intricate, uh, piece of work and so you really need a visual representation and you need to be hands-on with some of these things because as for me, I'm a very hands-on guy and that's the best way for me to learn, especially when I can have the real thing in front of me. So I highly recommend you guys to utilize the Cadaver Lab and go on your, sometimes on your free time and just go in there. Maybe spend like an hour to just re review some of, the, some of the things that you've learned in class and you can apply it. So please, you utilize that. Also, bones, say if your school is specifically, it's a little different, I would suggest that if they have bones to check out, check out those bones and examine those, look at how they're seen in a 3D way, and through that you'll also be able to see it in your head. It's almost like downloading that information into your head. Number eight, study time, space, repetition. We're often asked, how much do we study? How much do you have to study every day in medical school? He likes to say that it's very important to change it up. It's just about how you feel every day. Yeah. For me, I was focusing my first semester on just study. I'd come back and study and study and study and study until I felt like I finished and I'd go to bed. That isn't as effective because the reality is it works. Obviously it'll work for a few weeks and then you burn out. Uh, the better thing to do is not to be so strict on yourself. Listen to your body. If you're just feeling really stressed that day and maybe you need an hour or two to relax, it's okay, don't feel guilty about it. It's important to make sure that your brain is functioning and you are efficient. I focus on that. Space repetition is important. Um, as I was saying, study immediately that lectures that you can, study them immediately that day that you learn them and just keep refreshing a little bit every day. Or if you can't do that at least that night, study it and then go back to it that weekend. Don't let that material leave your memory because just one one weekend of not doing it can really cost you. And just a personal side note for study time. I like to do uh, 50 minutes of studying time and 10 minute breaks. Those are the, that's the interval that I like to uh, like to utilize. Um, for some of you, it might be completely different. Maybe you guys can study two hours and take like a 20 minute break. It's all up to you. It's all preference at this point. As long as you can get the material down and you feel very comfortable with the material, do whatever you whatever it takes for you to get the material really, really cemented in your head. Group study. There's pros and cons to this. I personally am not like the biggest fan of group studying. I like to self-study. I don't like to go off the pace of others. But the good thing about group studying is that you can sort of bounce off ideas that your some of your classmates probably understand better than you and you can kind of gauge what, what it's like to approach a different problem or a different scenario. So group studying is very beneficial for that part. A lot of your classmates will understand material better than you or, or sometimes you're just really not confident with the material so you just don't want to really express your views on that material at that point. You just want to really make sure you're really good with that material until you can probably approach a group of people and then get together and really talk about the material together. So group studying is one of those things that you should just really take into consider consideration and just think, oh, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Is it good for this subject? Is it not good for this subject? You will kind of get a feel of that as you make it through medical school. 
Don't be afraid to just self-study, maybe with just another partner. Uh, if you like to verbalize, do that. Talk it through with one other person, but make sure that you're using your time efficiently and effectively before you go and have a group study session. Maybe do that a few days before your exam so you can really solidify that information and get maybe some other concepts from other people that they caught that you didn't catch, little facts. Number 10, you time and health. One of the biggest things that happens to most medical students, and it's happened to me multiple times, and it has happened to me this past week, is that I get burnt out. And you really just need to find a good work-life balance when it comes to your studying. Usually after class, I like to go to the gym for 30 to 45 minutes, take that part of my day and to de-stress, to just really feel good about myself because I know that exercising helps boost my energy levels and it also helps my memory. So I like to do that and it just makes me feel good. Uh, why don't you want to feel good? I don't like sitting at my desk all day and feeling like a slouch and eating and it just makes me feel really bad about myself. I know I can do really well in school if I follow some of these tips, but I also want to treat my body well because it is like a car. As long as you take care of it, it will take care of you. So you need to just make sure you have a good work-life balance when it comes to these things. Also make sure that you're eating, sleeping, and drinking enough water. I know you hear this all the time, and I was telling you we should elaborate on that a little more. The reason why you want to be hydrated is for attention, seriously, for attention. Drink your water. And then sleep, same reason. If you're not well rested, and that all, don't listen to the eight glasses of water and the, the eight hours of sleep thing. If it does, if you know six hours is enough for you, make sure you are at least getting those six hours in. Make sure that whatever you do, you have your energy levels high and you're avoiding processed food if you know that you need to stay up for a long time. This is basically all the tips that we have for you guys. Um, we'll link all the sources, that, resources that we utilize down in the description below. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to follow us on Instagram at the DPM Journey or email us at the DPM Journey at gmail.com. Or even comment below, please, yeah. and subscribe so that we know that you want more of this material. Yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and we'll hopefully get, make a new video next time. So take care, guys.